Hey guys, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 33 of This Week in Board Games. In this weekly segment, I do quick reviews on all the games we played last week, go over any interesting board game news, and show any new purchases. Hopefully this gives you some ideas of games you can play with your friends and family. I kicked off this week with a board game night at work with several of my coworkers. We went down to Board Game Republic, which is a board game cafe here in Denver, Colorado. Really cool place, they have over 700 games there. You pay five bucks to get in the door. They have food and drinks available and you can use any of their library of 700 games to play. So you don't even have to lug games down there. It's really, really cool. So the game that my coworkers wanted to learn and play is Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars is for one to five players, ages 12 and up and plays in about two hours. It is a longer one. Every time I play it though, it doesn't even seem like two hours. It's that immersive of a game. Board game night, we're playing Terraforming Mars. What do you guys think? I think Ben's gonna win. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Terraforming Mars is one of my favorite games. It's very scientific, each person represents a corporation, and you're racing to settle and terraform Mars. The cards do things like build power plants, which produce energy, which then produce heat. And once you've raised the temperature, deployed enough plants and raised the oxygen, and deployed all the water tiles, then the game's over. I love Terraforming Mars. It's definitely in my top five. While I was at the work board game night, Allison and Kinsey pulled out Jaipur. Kinsey's gotten hooked on this game and is trying to get everyone to play it with her now. This is a two-player only game. You play with cards and it's kind of a trading game, very simple, but there's a lot of uh, depth to it and a lot of kind of push and pull between the two players. <laughs> Hi, we are the family of Snowboard Gamer and we are playing board games without Ben. Ha. Huh. We're playing Jaipur. We're Jaipur. playing Jaipur. Dad rolls his tongue. We're playing Jaipur. We're playing Jaipur. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take five camels. <laughs> I'll take a camel. I'll take two gram. This is our most played game last month in February. If you haven't checked out Jaipur, I highly recommend it. It's a great two player game. Travis had a drumline competition on Saturday, and when we got home, instead of playing board games, Travis wanted to stay up late and play with our raspberry pies. Instead of playing board games last night, Travis and I had a little hackathon. We took these raspberry pies, which is a credit card sized computer, and we hooked a little circuit up to it and wrote Python code to turn the light on and off. I wrote a little metronome program, check it out. So if I run metronome, okay, it asks me for the beats per minute. So let's say 120 beats per minute. And you can see the lights are blinking at 120 beats per minute. Pretty cool, right? On Sunday, we hung around the house. A few of Travis's friends came over and one of their dads came over as well. We played some board games. The first one we played was Scythe. Scythe is also in my top five. Scythe is for one to five players, ages 14 and up, and plays in 90 to 115 minutes. The premise of Scythe is post-World War I alternate history in Europa. There's a factory in the middle that everyone's vying for control over and the factory is producing these giant mechs. And you can see some of the artwork on the side of this box here with these mechs. It's just beautiful. I love this game. When you look at it, it looks like a war game, but it's really not. It's an economic engine building game where you're producing workers, you're putting them out on the board, they go out and produce resources. You use those resources to build buildings, deploy mechs, and eventually move your characters around the board to try and get some area control, and there's a little bit of battle. But the game that we played on Sunday, believe it or not, finished with zero battles. So this game doesn't have to even have any battles. This is such a fun game, and we played it with the airship expansion. Ethan just got an encounter card, and these cards inside, they're pretty hilarious. Uh, it says, pet the reindeer and flirt with the locals at the refinery. You can get $2 in the popularity. You can stock up on oil for the journey ahead. Get $2 in for oil. Or you can convince the soldier that reindeer aren't real. You can pay two popularity to get a recruit. That's hilarious. I'm winning. You're winning? Just kidding, I don't think so. I don't know, we'll see. 
Allison Kinsey and I played Zero one night this week. This is probably one of the simplest games to teach. It's for two to eight players, ages eight and up, and plays in 15 to 20 minutes. Sup, y'all? We in the house playing Zero. It's a pretty cool game. You take your cards and you throw them on the board, and then you just move your guy through maze. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. All right. Stop. Collaborate and listen. I is back with a brand new invention. Something gonna hold me tightly, willing like a harpoon daily and nightly. Will it ever stop you? No. I don't know. Turn off the lights and I'll blow. To the extreme, or rock a mic like a vandal. Light up the stage or rocks a chunk like a candle. Better hit bulls on the kid, don't play. If you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook, hold my DJ, roll off it. Ice, ice, ice baby. Dum 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 dum. Ice, ice, baby. So you put a card down. Oh my gosh, I made an infinite loop. I don't think that's legal. Okay, sorry. Ow. I don't know. This has like never happened before. This was gonna be my example. Wait, wait. How it's like you... freaking an infinite loop. I, I didn't think that was. Possible. I win. It game over. I win by infinity. <laughs> okay, so you pick a card and you play it, and then you have to move your guy along. The path, um, and if you get to the point where you can only play a card that takes you off the board, then you're out. So the last man standing wins, but you're not allowed to do infinite loops. Well, I'm dead. Allison pinned me in a corner here. It doesn't matter which way I go. If I can loop here, I'm dead. These are obviously all four out. That one's out, and that path is out. So I might as well go out in dramatic fashion here and take the longest route possible. Go big or go home. Um, so I either lose or tie for the win, so we're just gonna Around here. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Good, because I was going out that turn too. I'd leave literally nothing. Yeah, not much left. This is a really fun game. I love games that like, have like, uh, what's the word? Like mazes. I love maze games. So I really like this one a lot. I taught my friend Greg Splendor. Splendor is for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and plays in about 30 minutes. I love the simplicity of Splendor and how tight the game is. Let's hear what Greg thinks about it. I just taught my friend Greg Splendor. What'd you think, Greg? I liked it. I like that this game has a variety of paths and strategies to winning. I certainly made some mistakes about not paying attention to your strategies, and I and did not use the reserve cards or the uh, wild card. Uh, I am anxious to play this oh, game again gosh, and start taking nice. advantage of more mechanisms. <laughs> Travis is programming these LED lights on the Raspberry Pi. That's so cool. That is so cool, Travis. Next, we played some Twilight Struggle. This is also in my top five games. Wow, this week, three of my top five have been played. Twilight Struggle is a two-player game. This is for ages 13 and up and plays in two to three hours, so this is not a light game. I like to describe it as a game of chess with a Cold War theme. While we were hanging out Sunday, Alex and Ethan really wanted to play Twilight Struggle. Oh, I've rolled sixes every single, every single time. That's why I have control of North Korea as the US. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, you're destroying Alex. Kind of. Kind of? He's still winning at victory points. True. But... It's true. Not for long. Got a pretty this is Ethan's game. second game, and he's like picked up on strategy so fast. Like I'm really impressed. Nice. I'm having a lot of fun. So it's fun. Keep it up, Ethan. After that, Alex challenged me to a game of Twilight Struggle. One of the cool things about this game is that all of the cards in it are actual events from the Cold War. Ben and I are playing a game of Twilight Struggle, and uh, it's my third game today. And Ben's kind of whooping me. It's turn two, and he's at 12 points. We'll see though, because it starts to turn towards the US later in the game. That's true. I am going to play Kitchen Debates. So, if the US controls more battleground countries than the USSR, poke opponent in the chest and gain two victory points. Ow! <laughs> Dang it, he's coming back. Boom. 
The game went all the way to turn nine. It was super close. And at one point I was in the lead and then Alex was back and forth. I barely eked out a victory in turn nine by playing war games. This game is, I love how tight it is. It's, it's a cold war. It's a game of chess, just like the war games card says. How about a little game of chess? Awesome game. Now for the news. Meeple Overboard just dropped podcast number 55, which features me. Kind of building on a segment that Sean and I did earlier about what makes a game a wow factor game, we went and did a top five list of games that just wowed us from the beginning. So go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. I had a lot of fun with Chris and Wendy recording that episode. Terraforming Mars is getting another expansion. I'm super excited. It's called Terraforming Mars Prelude. It's a little mini expansion. From what I read, you modify your corporations and you choose several cards and pair them together so the corporations are not the same every time. You can mix them up and give them different powers and abilities. Sounds pretty cool. I'm excited for that. It's supposed to come out this summer at Origins. I'm really excited for the next week. Two of my sister-in-laws are coming in town to visit us. and One of them has a four-year-old daughter who loves playing board games. So if any of you have great recommendations to play with the four-year-old, leave them in the comments below. Let's move on to my new purchases. Didn't buy any new board games this week. I did get a letter in the mail. And this is funny. It had like my address literally cut out on a piece of paper and taped on. And the return address is from Stronghold Games. This is the publisher of Terraforming Mars. These are three more promo cards for Terraforming Mars. They were a few bucks each off of Stronghold Games website. Snow algae requires two oceans. Increase your plant production and your heat production one step. Small asteroid. Increase temperature one step. Remove up to two plants from any player. And penguins. Add one animal to this card. Requires eight oceans, but one victory point for each animal on this card. So that is it for this week in board games. Subscribe for more board game videos, and I will see you next time. Bye. Alex and I are na now blah. Let's try that again. Alex and I, Alex, blah. <laughs> what happened? I got a snap trap.